Hello, Gwilym. How's you, mate? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I've got a bit of news for you. Oh, I've got a bit of news for you. Hit me. We are now the two on sex in a pod, on a pod, however it goes, because I am now an honorary secretary. That's good. If, if you just listen to what you just said and you didn't know that you said S-E-C-S, um, <laughs> with the two of us are on sex. That's yes. not good. No, no, actually, that, that, that's terrible. terrible. That, 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 awful. Did, that didn't quite work as well as I imagined it would in my head. But congratulations. <laughs> yeah, look, last night I was elected honorary secretary of the Avenue Lawn Tennis and Squash Association. Is that, is that a global organisation? Is it literally confined to one road? It's, it's, it's not confined to a road. It's confined to an area. But uh, it's, it's, not, it's not just the squash and tennis club for an avenue. It's just that's... In fact, it's not even in an avenue. I don't know why it's got that name. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, Lee, with great power comes great responsibility. So, Oh, t- tell me about it. I um, I found out all sorts of things about the running of the club last night. That means um, I need to bring the full weight of my experience and huge knowledge to bear on its future operations it should be very very scared how power, power comes to a select few but it does seek out those who are worthy i mean it's like lord of the rings this <laughs> anyway any news any news yeah, I, had a sh- I had a shock this morning go on then i'll read out an exchange some <clears throat> polly excuse me polly my daughter who is 17 i uh, working very hard at school occasionally a bit of a rebel and i got a text this morning saying just got sent home from school, got really badly told off. I was quite worried because, you know, she can be a bit outspoken. So there's two texts me here. You in trouble? No response. You OK? No response. And then four minutes later, April Fools! <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> demolished me. It's embarrassing. It's pathetic. She's so oh. pleased with herself. Really simple, powerful stuff. Yeah. I, I didn't even think about trying to get you on an April Fools. I now feel like I've missed the trick. Lee Davis and Gwilym Roberts are the two IPs in a pod, and you are listening to a podcast on intellectual property, brought to you by the Chartered Institute of Patent Attorneys. Cracking podcast we've got today. You're, you're a bit of a gamer, aren't you, I think? Um, I, I was in, oh, in the 80s. I in loved the 80s, yeah, yeah. Galaxians, Phoenix. Yeah. Don't go through too many of them, because I might have got a couple lined up for our expert guest. <laughs> I don't want to use all of my powder up in one go. Shall we, shall we get him on? Shall we ask him to come and join do us? Let's do it. Gitano, welcome to um, to IPs. Fancy telling us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself. Make, make yourself sound a bit interesting. Okay, that's going to be tough. I'll, I'll do my best. Thank you much. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I love the first part of this conversation. And I'll, and I'll try to keep it on the same level. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Gaetano Dimita. I'm a senior lecturer in International Intellectual Property Law at the Centre of Commercial Law Studies, Queen Mary University of London. That, that was easy for you to it, say. It took me a decade to actually say without breathing, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm close to perfection on that. <laughs> but I spent more or less the last 10 years working on uh, intellectual property and video games. That's my main area of, of research, my passion. And to be honest, I'm so happy when I tell people that I do that. I mean, it's just, just <laughs> it's gratifying. I, I know I, I struggled to make you um, stop talking on the little briefing that we do for this. <laughs> so um, I, I know exactly how passionate you get about it. But you told me it's not gaming. It's something else. Is it? It's interactive. I call it interactive entertainment law. I mean, it's not only me calling it. It's, it's interactive entertainment law because uh, from the list that William uh, shared of video games, things evolve substantially. Now, it's not just about the video game per se, you know, the linear video games, but it's a form of entertainment that is uh, uh, immersive and is uh, based on, on user participation. So w- w- when I teach and when I do research, this is the part in which I focus the most. It's not something passive, you know, like uh, there is a, an amazing joke from Daryl Brian that say the difference is that, that you never had a book or a film so after a few minutes telling you that you were not good enough to continue watching it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, an amazing uh, act that he has on, on video games. And, uh, and, and th- that's actually true. That, that's the core. It's, it's a form of intellectual property that is, demands the participation of the user. And of course, it creates a fantastic uh, question for an academic and a researcher and uh, troubles for practitioner <laughs> and you know, <laughs> people. But I mean, I'm on the fun side. Before, before we get too much into the kind of the law and the techie stuff and all that kind of thing, we've, we've been asking, we've stopped recently, but we've been asking our guests about the impact the pandemic has had on their lives. I'm guessing for you, though, I, there's just one question I'm dying to ask you. You've just spent the last two years playing games, haven't you? 
No, because I have a four years daughter that was two years ah. <laughs> at the beginning of the pandemic. So no, it wasn't it wasn't as uh, people without kids lived through the pandemic in a, in a different way. I mean, the, it was fun, but I I, I I miss the contact with people, even if I deal with with techy stuff. You know, when it comes to teaching, being in a room with the students uh, makes the difference. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I was thinking in preparation for this, historically, games, video games, that sort of thing, have got a bad rap, haven't they? But I, I, I thought, and I appreciate your view on this, did the pandemic offer the industry something different in terms of being able to prove itself as a force for good? I'm thinking, like, for people's mental health, for well-being, for enabling people to be connected and that sort of thing. No, it is an amazing question because, I mean, uh, actually the pandemic gave the, gave the industry the possibilities to show how, how good they are. I mean, I, I'm not part of the industry. I mean, I'm, I'm an independent observer. But uh, it is true when they say that probably video games saved the mental health of a lot of people during the pandemic, uh, especially a younger generation that are probably need, need more. I mean, younger people need more, probably, the, the social connection with, with, with their peers. Yeah, That was done through video games. But this is something that was already there before. I mean, it's, uh, now a, a lot of, you know, first contact with people outside of your family and, and a school circle that you meet is through video games. And, and this showed the, the power, the positive power that, that video games can have. You know, it's true, they, they, they had a bad rep for so long, even though science kept pointing out that uh, it was an unjustified bad rep. But I guess it, appear, it happens for every form of new media, everything that is new. And it's funny because now it's 50 years old, but it's still considered <laughs> a new thing. Yeah, they're good. They're amazing. As any technologies, there might be something going bad, but it tends not to be the, a technological problem. It tends to be <laughs> other intervention they make. So, so, I, so I shouldn't necessarily be worried that my 14 year old daughter lives most of her life in Fortnite and Minecraft and places like that then no I, I, I wouldn't be worried I mean I'm not a behavioral psychologist or a shift in <laughs> psychologist but uh, I, I turn out okay I mean <laughs> Well, well, jury's out to be honest yeah but... hang on a minute um, that's basically the end of the book okay I said okay <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, I mean, it's a method of communication. And, and it's so funny because the, uh, parents and, and, and regulators had this kind of conversation for centuries. There, there have been a parliamentary investigation on whether or not we should ban books because books yeah. would force kids to stay at home and not play on the street. That was what was suggested for kids to do. Now we will have a different approach. I mean, probably it's better to read a book than play on the street <laughs> in London. But, uh, but that's the thing. It, it, it's a matter of, of perception. And... Uh, it is a form of entertainment. So, so I, again, I, I, I was maybe overthinking this before I come on, and Gollum's going to have to shut me up at some point because I've been thinking so much about this. I've got an absolute head full of things to ask you. So, um, no, I, I, I think I worked really hard on the last one. You did work really hard on the last one. Yeah. So, um, chill. <laughs> so chill. Yeah. So, and I was thinking, you know, I used to, to when I played video games to use kind of probably the base level. I used to have to go to an arcade or my local leisure center where there were machines kind of plugged into the wall. They didn't speak to anyone else. They were just plugged into the wall and they 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 lived their own little like remote existence. Games must have moved from being something we do for a bit of fun and a bit of entertainment to something more deeper. Is that right? Yeah, I do believe so. That's probably also one of the main reasons of the change of names on, on, on how we, we approach this issue. Because it's not just uh, you playing uh, with the machine in an arcade. And the arcade was already a very social en environment. I, I used to go to an arcade, so I'm just giving away all the air. But <laughs> there were arcades when I was young. Now it's fully integrated in, in social life. We play with friends abroad in different places. You... It, Generally, part of your social media life is might be connected to the video game you played, and uh, there are a lot of people making living out of uh, uh, playing video games. Not only you know what you read on the news, the esport player winning uh, insane amount of money on tournaments because they're incredibly skilled, and I do believe they deserve it. But 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 also people being influencer connected to the video game that they played, YouTube videos, and and uh, playing video game on Twitch. There is an entire culture surrounding it. It has become part of the popular culture uh, in, in a deeper way that you would have expected, you know, in in, in the eighties and nineties. So yeah, well, my, my social element. I don't want to give too much away about the kind of life I led when I was 14, 15, 16. But my social element came from the other stuff we did around the machine rather than the machine itself. 
Have we got this bit as well, Lee? Hang on. <laughs> I was going to say there might have been substances, substances, you know. substances involved, but that would have only been like chewing gum and things like that. I okay. I'm going to get, get nostalgic. <laughs> I loved video games when they came out. Um, but the very first one I remember was a tabletop Pac-Man in a pub in Liverpool in I don't know eighty. Two, something like that from something pretty pretty long time ago ish and i then switched off games for <laughs> quite a long time when they came back they definitely moved on they're a total art they're an art form now aren't they i mean they're up I, there in terms of the preparation uh, with a major movie yeah i mean they are an art form i mean pixelation increase the the <clears throat> the hardware increase uh, the immersiveness of the game increase of course i mean we're generalizing on video games uh, there is still the simplicity of uh, a sequential game on your phone that you play during your commute if if, if you commute but uh, on on the high end you know triple a now they are intense uh, uh, intense stories that you na- navigate with your choices and the, w- what i find in more fascinating is actually while there was a tendency, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm bringing it back to IP, but the, 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 there was a tendency to start from a movie, to start from existing intellectual property and move into video games. Now it's generally inverted. It's actually the IP is created from the video game, and then you get you know the, the movie, the book, and and, and and all this running. Even the licensing has been uh, inverted, and they are bigger. I mean the probably for almost 10 years, they've been bigger than film and music put together. Really? Uh, 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 as revenue. It's, it's, it's a massive industry. And the apport to, to the UK economy, because the UK is an amazing place where to develop and publish a video game, is, a, is substantial. And they are work of art. I mean, they are definitely work of design just to cut a very long conversation. They are exposed at MoMA, they are exposed in museum. There is a huge movement over the preservation of the video games because it's part of our cultural heritage nowadays. And they're beautiful. I mean, they're, they're so cool now. <laughs> I mean, back can, to- can, I, can I do my nostalgia bit? I am going to take us into like the hard IP. That way we, we will get there. Gattano, we will get there. But as Gwilym's done his nostalgic bit, I wasn't a Pac-Man fan. So I used to, and I, I thought I was wait, making it up this morning. So I had to sort of do a bit of research to see if I actually remembered the game that I was playing. It was a pinball video game hybrid. And it was called Captain Caveman. And you, you played pinball. And if you manage to flick the ball up this little ramp and drop it into a like a little holding thing, then the video game element came in and Captain Caveman, that was a sort of 70s, 80s Hanna-Barbera cartoon, I think, yeah. run around with his club bashing various things ar- around. <laughs> sort of like, That's yeah. the one. I, I yeah, wasn't yeah. making it up, was I? I, I did actually no, live that experience, yeah. It, was, it wasn't the substances. The game that I loved more than anything, and I still, I, now I'm midlife crisis, you know, you can think, oh, I'll get, I'll get a pinball machine. If I were to do that thing, I would get the Star Wars vector graphics game from the mid 80s, the one with the green lines. And you used to sit in the booth and everyone <laughs> from over here would speak in your ear and these big kind of donuts, not donuts, some popcorn that come flying at you. I was rubbish at it, but my mate Andrew actually go around the clock on the numbers. He was so good that he could just stand all day, go all the way around the clock and start from scratch. Blew up the Death Star so many times. Uh, once someone told me, you know, the real video games were the one from the 80s because they depicted real life. They got harder and harder and you couldn't <laughs> win. <laughs> it, 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 it is a good point. That's why you might get so nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got Fran, Fran saying she's a Mario Kart fan. I've, I've done that actually over, over, over lockdown with um, colleagues in San Francisco, Tom and Emily. It's great fun, actually. I'll oh, crap at that though as well. I never blew up the Death Star. Let's 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 get back on track because I doubt that everyone listening really wants to listen to our experiences, do they? Particularly. Oh, okay. So you meant you mentioned earlier on, Gatano, the the regulatory bit. Can we go there first? So I mean, we're we're living in an age, particularly in the UK, where the government wants to regulate more tightly our online experience. I'm thinking about social media, particularly here, and not necessarily games. But that so, so the topic of the moment, isn't it, is about regulating our lives in terms of social media. It always used to be gaming that was blamed for everything, from violence, as you talked about earlier, to the breakdown of civil society. We don't hear that anymore. Do we not hear that because the regulation of the interactive entertainment industry has got it right? Or do we just not hear it because it's not true? Tough question to, to answer. I mean, the, the thing is, in the UK, we're experiencing something unique. Actually, there has been uh, much more attention on regulatory aspect than in other countries. 
this has been welcomed from, from one point of view. On the other one, is creating a situation in which uh, the, 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 there is a lot coming on the plate and it's really difficult to navigate. The point is that while, while uh, the, the directed uh, regulation, first of all, most of the time, regulation is a, is a reaction to something. It's a reaction yeah. to moral panic. And that's why we still get video games blamed for absurd things, for instance, in the US, whenever a mass shooting happens. There is always some, someone blaming uh, video games on the news. And until very recently, we had uh, video games being blamed for children dropping out of school or, 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 or video games being blamed because uh, a, a number overspending on microtransactions. And, and, and this generally calls from, uh, from, from intervention, or at least promise of intervention from some, some politician. I mean, that kind of a classic to react to the moral panic. You are right that the attention moved towards social media in, in the last two years, but we had a lot of really good evidence to worry about social media. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, the, the evidence is on the table. I, I would probably not judge it as a moral point. There, there is a, a structural issue, and, and we have a problem with, with, with ARM online. I mean, that's un, undoubtedly. Uh, whether or not uh, the regulation is effective, of course, I mean, uh, I think that now we are the fourth or fifth draft of the online safety bill. It's something that is being constantly under discussion. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, a, a good way to approach it is just, as, of course, the devil is in the detail. When, when you get into that. And if, if you look at the details, video games get caught. These are regulations on something bigger that immediately apply to video games because video games are social media platform within, within their platform. And, and, and that's one of the problems that regulation of video games uh, uh, creates because there is a lot of regulation that apply, but they are generally not designed with video games in mind. The online safety bill probably could be an exception because uh, has been mentioned, has been pointed out that there are these difficulties with this massive industry. And all these different form of regulation, not directly designed video games, they overlap with each other and are really difficult to na navigate because they're generally not coherent. They are coming from different sources. They're trying to tackle different problems. And, and, and then you have this massive industry that has to to deal with it <laughs> at the end of the day in order to be compliant. And that could be problematic. No, let, let me differentiate. It could be problematic, but in different ways, because then you have the, the, the majors, the, the, the big players that, of course, I mean, they will spend their time and, and they will deal with it. They will, they, they will be compliant, but it creates a lot of problems for small and medium enterprise that uh, they, they get caught in, in a lot of things to take into consideration, often not having the, the, the resources or even the, the um, I, I'm lacking the, <laughs> the word, no, the sophistication to deal with regulation. You can publish a video game by yourself. You can actually design, develop and publish a video game and put it on a, on, on a platform by yourself and, and be extremely successful and have millions of users. And, uh, and, and have to deal with regulation, especially data protection has been a big one because of the GDPR and the attention then of data. But uh, in general, with, with responsibility that you will have to add to your customer. So, so, so you, you can have an individual person, probably a young person, I'm guessing. This could be, this, this could be 14, 15 year olds who are getting into gaming and sort of in, inventing their own world. And that, they can go from a relatively low starting point, I imagine, to be quite rapidly influential in the space no how how does regulation deal with that how can regulation deal with that oh i i don't know <laughs> oh can you find someone who can answer the question then <laughs> no it, it is an issue but but that thing this goes beyond video because of course i mean the thing is on one side you have the interactive entertainment product and then you have the usage of that inter people playing that game and this creates another layer, a, a derivative market connected to video games that is massive. I mean, video game players sharing their, their playthrough on, on Twitch and on YouTube, they, they are very successful uh, social media influencers. Is it is it wrong for me to say I have no idea what you're talking about when you say Twitch? No, it's not, it's not, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> it, it, it's a platform where people, uh, okay, now, I mean, however I design it, I'm going to get it wrong. But just to explain where it is, you log in and you watch other people playing video games i've just been invited to be on twitch but i'm glad you asked what it was lee because i just said yeah yeah 
No one ever is. It is amazing. I mean, uh, it is an amazing platform. You just uh, create your account. You can share what you're playing or what you're doing on your PC. Now it's not only about video games. There are people sharing, uh, you know, anything from cooking lesson to how to learn to play the piano or just chat, how to make the perfect English tea. There's something that, for instance, I, I watched. I didn't know that was com so complicated to, to make tea. But <laughs> there is for anything. And the thing is, they do have a, a, a lot of followers and it's, uh, it's something enjoyable to watch. And, and coming from me, because I, I remember when I was younger, watching someone else playing the video and waiting your turn was one of the worst moments you could have. It's actually enjoyable because they are, they are pure entertainment. Actually, the, the video game become an excuse to, to, to perform in some form, highly creative, uh, brilliant entertainment, and uh, better than TV. <laughs> but Gwilym's desperate to get into the conversation. Come on, mate. No, I can, I, see, well, I can see you there. I can see you champing at I the mean, I could just talk about more 80s games if you want. No, I was actually going to um, get on, and we haven't touched on the, the awesome conference that I know you run. Oh, um, yes. The, um, which is coming out. I don't quite know when this podcast is going out, so unfortunately people might miss it, but I know you sold all your tickets out. We couldn't have come anyway. We 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 sold out before announcing the conference. I mean that that's that that sounds illegal. No, I mean we this year was was for free. We managed to have all the delegates participating for for free. So that 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 was success. No, it was we suspended more than just a game. That's the name of the conference. It's it's a it's a conference that we started in 2015 to put together, you know academics, uh, in-house council, practitioner, uh, interest in, in video games and working in the field to, di to, to discuss uh, uh, the hot topics of the moment, the, the, the crucial and controversial aspect of law, regulation and contract in, in interactive entertainment law. And then immediately it exploded. I mean, in, 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 in the years before the pandemic, I think we organized 14 conferences all around Europe. And, uh, and it's been fun. It's been, it's been amazing because it's, it's, a, it's a very community-led uh, uh, conference. I mainly send out emails. <laughs> that, 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 that's my job as an organizer. And uh, it's always been great fun. Of course, for the pandemic, I mean, I think we organized the last one was uh, in February 2020 in Barcelona. And, 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 then, uh, and then we suspended everything because, because of the pandemic, the lockdown. And, and we kept postponing it because, of course, we didn't want to, to, to cancel it. And at some point, I think it was in January, February, we received so many emails of people that uh, wanted to know if we were going to do it this year that we just decided, okay, let's do it. Let's do something smaller. Let's do, but at least let's meet again. And, and this year, the, the, the program has, has evolved. It's actually on, on one topic we didn't mention yet, the, the metaverse uh, in uh, However, you want to define it, and then and 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 then uh, regulation. That that's actually the the, the question. The, the two questions that Lee asked me uh, is going to take probably eight hours to discuss them <laughs> on Friday, and I attended with a one liner <laughs> to, to give a view. They're very complex questions, and they become uh, societal questions more than just you know video games or social media, because most of the problem we see in social media are actually societal problems that gets. Uh, uh, amplified online or they come from something wrong that is also happening online i was i was going to ask about this sorry Gwilym, i've immediately cut in again because uh, i was going to ask about the societal um issues and whether whether the interactive entertainment industry has a wider social purpose Do, are these conversations that people have about the way that um so let, let's talk about i don't know top topics of the moment would be the conflict in ukraine um, the, the climate challenge are these conversations that are happening within the industry in terms of the way it can respond yes yes i don't have the numbers but in the link in the games from ukraine uh, collected an insane amount of money for for to, to help and and uh, they're very into a, it is a massive industry so it's really difficult to to, to generalize there are so many so, so many players i think in, in in the uk the last count there are 1800 uh, companies that do video games so it's difficult to talk about the entire video game industry from the big AAA publisher to, you know, the 14 years old that, that calls a game and publish it on, on, on Valve. So I, I'm really generalizing here. But yes, it, it, they are very, very much involved 
in, in, in all this conversation. Of course, uh, uh, there the, the used to be a tendency not to get political, but some of these topics are beyond uh, being political. And, uh, and it's not just me being naive. I mean, uh, the, 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 the video game industry, the interactive entertainment industry lives on, on their play. It's, it's a community-based uh, industry. So even from a commercial point of view, uh, makes sense <laughs> to, to, to fight for good, if you, if you pardon me, the massive uh, generalization. That is also creating a little bit of more technical discussion when it comes to regulation, because the, the way a social media entity works is different than the way a video game company uh, works. But they're, they're pretty much involved. There have actually been a, a interesting studies, for instance, on, on the environmental side that had more time to develop and, and, and to collect data. There are a lot of environmentally inspired game, and there are studies that shows that technically I mean, playing this game teaches you how to be more environmental friendly. And, and, and actually to take into consideration that if you, I don't know, even just civilization, if you start dropping nukes uh, around the globe, uh, everyone is going to die. I mean, you, you see it immediately, in the, not, not that you need it, but I mean, it, it, actually, since you're so immersive, it, it could, be, you could be used, for instance, in teaching. There, there is uh, extensive research that show that video games uh, can be used to, to teach and, and, and to teach in, in a way that is probably more, more inverse, uh, immersive and more critical uh, in, in its approach than simply reading a book or getting a lecture. On a I, guess, I guess at the top end of that, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but things I'm like... Not, not, not me neither. I'm an happy lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm allowed to not know what I'm talking about. You not so. Uh, I'll, I'll clarify all the end, guys. Don't worry. Uh, brilliant. So I'm thinking about flight simulation. Is that sort of like use of gaming to learn stuff i'm imagining it is because there's you know it must must yeah, be I mean, but, but even 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 medical training do, doctor training i mean uh not now in, in vr for instance vr is making even much much easier to actually train people uh on on, on anything because uh, it, it can be done and sometimes it can be done remotely so uh, the, the advantages are, are incredible. But you're touching on, on, on a point. I mean, we're, we're reaching a level in which uh, it's it always been probably, okay, I'm extremely biased, but uh, anything anything tends to happen first in video games. And then we see it happening in, in, in the wider society. And now with the evolution of, of technology and with the evolution on, on the way we actually use technology, Anything is being gamified to some uh, to some extent, yeah. and, and and going forward, everything is going to be more video game based. So a, a lot of legal issues that video games have today are going to be the legal issue that everyone is going to have uh, tomorrow. And this is because the industry is, is very innovative and is young, and and sometimes, curiously, for for, for instance, for IP, I, I have the example, but they're, they're not afraid to take risks. Can we can we come on to the law? I'm really pleased that you you brought it into that point because it was where I was going to go next in any case. So where, where does the law come in? There, there must be obvious examples like copyright and, and the like, but this is a really fast paced area, isn't it? And it must it must be almost running ahead of the law. Where where, where are the touch points with the law? Oh, the touch point of the law. That of course the the, the law is always been slower than anything else. I mean, and it's, and it's probably good. We have some time. We need some time to think it through before passing any piece of legislation on anything. But uh, the, the law is everywhere in video games, from their creation from to the, the, the people playing it. There was a moment in which we, we, people thought the internet was a different place and had no connection to, to the physical world. I mean, we, we move beyond that. They are ubiquitous and, and any piece of legislation tends to apply to, to video games. So in IP, everything... Everything, for instance, everything according to the criteria is protected by IP. You have uh, uh, copyright, patent, trademark, design, uh, use of third parties, IPs, extensive use of third party uh, IPs, and trade secret. I mean, anything you can think of is there is there on uh, in video games. And being extremely fast in in evolving and uh, a, a lot of the time, most of the AP questions are, 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 are difficult to answer, or at least you don't have a clear answer. So you have your risk assessment <laughs> to, to, to deal with. It is interesting how the IP world often grapples with a lot of the issues in new technology before anyone else. Um, I mean, I think some of the, 
there have been some unnecessary ethical issues raised first through IP in relation to AI, for example. And there's some sense behind that because, of course, we tend to see the innovation first, so we're the ones who end up having to deal with it. But I'm taking it back to the, the metaverse, um, the topic of that conference you've got coming up. I mean, we've been discussing, because I, mean, I was I'm, I'm involved in one panel, so I'm, I'm cheating because I've been well briefed by lots of other people, but it's been really interesting there looking at the, the aspects that are coming up. And Lee, one that I thought was really interesting there was inter interoperability. Um, basically, you can have a whole bunch of providers providing bits of metaverse, but a bit like the current mobile phone world, you don't want to have a mobile phone that only works with your network. You're going to want, yeah. and so all the that was fascinating for me. Um, and the other one, get on which I thought that really interesting was um, sustaining your identity across multiple different platforms as well. You don't want to have different avatars for different places. You want to be traipsing around this kind of virtual world and staying the same person everywhere. And that's got. I think can't even begin to think where the legal, the legal issues have come out of that. No, oh, yes, I mean, really, I, I, I hope that was a question you don't want me to answer because I, I don't know how, how, how we're going <laughs> to solve, solve these problems. But that, that, that is the thing. Is, when you deal with it a video game, from a video game perspective, I think you, you could be a, a little bit more relaxed. If you're trying to solve it in, in this uh, limited fantasy environment, you can actually look at the legal question in a very neutral way without having... Uh, all, all the extra bias that you would have if uh, if you're dealing with the same legal problem in another environment. And I'm very be careful not to mention what the other environment <laughs> is in my head <laughs> at the moment. I, I hope I was big enough. But I think that that, that calls a better analysis of the problem and potential solution because everything is uh, everything at the end is interlinked. And even before the metaverse or one of the metaverse is going to be playable in video games we already have the, the experience because we had most of this discussion of course with an older technology much more leading that but most of the discussion started probably with second life 20 years ago yeah yeah so on some of the concept we have been thinking about it for, for a very long time and that I, definitely this is expertise that is going to be useful when this uh, words environment that has been primarily linked to video games in the past are going to evolve and go beyond video game or as i prefer to put it everything is going to become a video game <laughs> yeah was was second life really 20 years ago uh, more or less i mean for that's version shocking 15, I, I think i rounded up to the <laughs> that's no no you're, you must be right but and it's still running it's still running it's, it's incredible it, it's still a good game Honestly, uh, some of the new metaverse I've seen, Second Life looked better, <laughs> or, or probably it was my memory, you know, you, you tend to romanticize. <laughs> Actually, Gaetan, I remember that we had a chat during lockdown, and as you were sounding out what, what you thought people might want to do about MTJG, and wasn't one of our ideas, or one of your ideas actually, was to have the conference in a virtual world, in, was it inside one of the big existing multiplayer Game. Yeah, we, we, we were thinking, not the entire conference, but we were thinking to have our discussions, our session uh, in video games. So we were thinking Minecraft or Fortnite and actually have a legal discussion while playing video games. Actually, a student of mine started like uh, on Twitch, going back to, to Twitch, one of my, my, my PhD students is, um, is on Twitch every week discussing uh, IP case law while playing uh, Cyberpunk. And he's very successful. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. I do remember. I remember also your concern if you run it in Fortnite that you may not be able to lock the space. He created a lot of problem, and then uh, I have to say that the, the reason why the idea failed is because uh, you know a, a conference, the social aspect of the conference, is as important as the content of the program, <laughs> and you cannot replicate the social part online. It is one of the problems the metaverse is aiming at, at, at solving, but. Uh, Probably that technology is not. Is, it, is, that in and of, is that in and of itself, though, uh, an age related thing, Gatano? Because I, I talked to my, um, particularly my 14 year old, talked to him about this. Um, because for me, the big bit of conferences and that is always the networking, is always the social bit. But we seem to have a generation of young people that have lived their lives so much virtually that that's not important to them anymore. No, no, it's evolution. They're just better. We, we have to accept that every, every generation. <laughs> 
<laughs> humans get better. No, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that uh, also another topic, I'm not, I'm not an expert, but even, even with all the technology available, a lockdown showed us that we, we still need the meeting other people in person. So I, th- I think it's a little bit of, of, of an illusion and it's also a way of communicating. My mother still phone, I, I, I send text messages. My daughter probably is going to be on Discord or whatever. The method of communication is, is going to be and, and you adapt because of the need of communication. But yes, the, the, the younger, they tend to be better with technology. <laughs> I, I'm quite, I'm, old, I'm, old, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not old school, about this. I'm young school about this. I don't go around in the real world smelling people and touching them a lot. So I think a good virtual world is absolutely fine. Um, maybe that's just me being me. No, I'll go along with that entirely. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, could, I could live like that. I could never leave this room again, but I'd be quite happy. Yeah, I've been more around the world in the last couple of years. But have I just talked to my VR helmet? Lee, I can't remember. Uh, do we even want to go there? I, I, bearing in mind where we started. Just quick, where is it? It might be here. Oh, no, it's oh, no you're not going to get your helmet out, are you? Get my helmet out now. Yeah, you, you keep... Yeah, no, I'm not... Yeah, I'll just keep it, I'll keep it clean. There, look, there's new VR helmet. Look, got one. Yeah. That's not a helmet, that's a visor. Oh, all right, all right, all right, my VR visor. It's um, entry-level Oculus Go. I actually went with a mate, um, my colleague in San Francisco, he's got one as well, and we attended a film launch in VR. In, I think it's Old Space, maybe one of the kind of early VR worlds that we went Old, to. Old Spice, that was a Old, Old Spice, yeah, we can't smell it. What's the point? It makes no, like I say, um, <laughs> no, it's Old, Old Space. Yeah, and we just turn up and um, walked around in kind of a virtual cinema and you can kind of make your avatar move around and you can recognise, and if you stand close enough, you can have a conversation. <laughs> What's quite amusing was that <clears throat> it was a proper film launch of a kind of an indie film and you could ask questions of the avatar at the front. And it turned out that apart from me and my colleague, no one there was un- was over the age of 12. So <laughs> all these kids who crashed it and were asking really rude questions to the director. So there's, you know, there's other little things that have still got to work out that, that, that was quite interesting. But um, I thought yeah, it was the, such the, a cool the, idea. VR is, a, VR is amazing. I mean, uh, of course, there is, a, there is a little bit of barrier to entry because you probably you have to spend on, on the hardware. But uh, the, 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 they are amazing experience in, uh, in VR. I mean, again, they, they move beyond video games. There are, there are games that are fun to play, but, but the experiences uh, that you can uh, actually enjoy are, are, are incredible. And th- that could have never been done without, without this technology. This start, in a sense, from gaming. But you still can't drink a cup of tea while you're doing it because it steams up the lenses. No. So you've got a way to go. I, I tried to teach there was, there is, there is, uh, there, there is a video game that has, uh, uh, as part of the VR experience, there is like a, a massive window on which you can write. So I thought it was a good idea to start recording my lectures while I'm writing in this, uh, you know, apocalyptic uh, world, post-apocalyptic world. And mm. at, at some point after two hours trying, I just abandoned. <laughs> it was yeah. complicated to execute or I wasn't good enough. To do that, but there, there are people that do it. I mean, you, you can actually run the very nice uh, meeting in VR, and it, it is an added value than than just seeing you know the two dimensional screen and and having a Zoom conversation. But- as, so as, as as a patent attorney, the hardware bit obviously fascinates me, and the mm-hmm. software bit actually. And I, my kind of gut feeling at the moment on the VR bit is that not unlike some other technologies. That the materials aren't quite there yet. So, the um, you know, for example, there's a great piece of kit that, but it, the battery life is 90 minutes, and then it boils your head because it gets so hot. And um, I, I think I named the product earlier, so we're probably in all kinds of trouble there. And well, um, I mean, I, I have the first edition of that product, and it's still okay. connected to a very powerful PC. Otherwise, it wouldn't it wouldn't yeah. work. But once the hardware <laughs> catches up. <laughs> I'm really interested in seeing the hardware wars that are going to come, actually, because I think there's going to be a battle to get. I think augmented reality, which is kind of fancy glasses, is maybe the one that people are backing more, as far as I can tell. Once that hardware is settled and good, it's going to be amazing. And somebody somewhere is going to have a very strong monopoly on, on that bit of that bit of. The, I don't know if we're going to get to a monopoly, because especially I mean, if you look at the history of, of, of console, there have been a lot of console at the beginning and then set three. three and then there was a clear market divide between a big, huge fan of one in particular and a rare one that had more than 
the two. So the, we we will still have, I guess, multiple sets. But you're right on one point: the augmented reality is going much faster because the technology is already in your pocket. So you you can have the the, the you know the mixed reality fancy glasses, but you most of the augmented reality app you can use your phone, and yeah. almost everyone has a smartphone now. And and the the, the, the barrier, the technological barrier, is is, is non-existent because it's, it's a device that you already had. Yeah. And, and, and you're just adding on that. And at the speed of uh, technology evolution, I mean, it could be a matter of a, of a couple of years. Now, VR, you still have the thing that you have to put the visor on. You know, your joke about having a, having a cup of coffee with that. It, it, it is actually true. There is something that you can still feel that you don't yeah. have documentary reality. You just move, move the phone. But um, for instance, on that, I'm fascinated on, on, on the impact. What happens when... Uh, uh, you move in, from a situation in which the screen is in front of you and you can see the surrounding to having, uh, you know, the, the goggles and you can only see and hear coming from uh, things coming from from, from, from from the game, from the from the experience. If there is a real argument behind saying, I mean, the more immersive the experience is, the more carefully you have to uh, to look at. That is, uh, this is uh, it is an ongoing discussion. Of course, as every new technology, the first discussion is always liability, and then you move into uh, IP and the more uh, the more interesting from my perspective. I'm not saying that the liability side is less interesting from a research point of view, but it's not my my cup of my cup of tea. Uh, and then you get into the, in, into the IP question, and 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 VR is created, especially VR that is the impact by you know this 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 personalized experience. That you can actually have nowadays, you know the, the the fact that you could have some video games in VR, for instance, they can be uh, toned up and down according to your reaction to the video games. I mean, uh, I've seen it once on on an horror game; they will become more scary until you reach the 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 the, 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 the tipping point of being scared, you know, enjoyably scared <laughs> or heart attack. <laughs> and and uh, it is incredible. That incredible advancement but then i start thinking with my copyright head uh how's it gonna work if you're actually is you influencing the story <laughs> and now the the game is evolving and then of course the other side my tmt size i think wow data protection <laughs> what's gonna happen with, with, with actually we're already experiencing in social media the amount of data that is collected is is incredible it can be used to make the experience uh, perfect for you but but still a, a lot of that <laughs> i'm conscious that we're kind of creeping towards a close here gatano is there anything is there anything you were thinking oh they're going to ask me that that we haven't asked you so is there anything you wanted to get across well not now can i answer not really to that <laughs> <laughs> no 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 nothing is not specific. I, 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 I was expecting you to go after on the metaverse because now it's it's it's, it's, it's the topic <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. And I do want to be rude, but Lee glazed over. Brandad Davis Crazo glazed over a few minutes together. Have you seen <laughs> Lee? Have you seen Ready Player One? No. I said, have you seen the guitar now? Of course I did. Ah, of course you've seen it. Sorry. I, I, I read the book before. <laughs> have you read Ready Player Two? Oh, I shouldn't be rude. I'm not going to be rude. Don't read Ready Player Two. Oh, my goodness. No, yes, so, see, sequel now, I learned my lesson. I'm over 40. You, you look at the sequel after the 40 in the trilogy is out. And then... Yeah. <laughs> Ready Play One is, is actually a brilliant visualization of what a metaverse might look like. It's over the top, but um, it's, really, it's directed by Steven Spielberg, so it's a safe bet anyway. But um, it, is, it, it, is, it is the best way to describe what we're dreaming. I have the house to myself this evening, so I'll get on Netflix and try and find it. It is superb. And also, the what's I, I quite interestingly, given how 80s our vibe has been about kind of where this all came from, it's got a really strong connection to the 80s, that film as well. This is the thing I have to say, uh, the nostalgia is the part I love the most. The video game I played, the music I listened to. <laughs> yeah. So everything was... And, and in the book, there is much more. Much more connected. Yeah, the book's... Yeah, the book's, the book's <laughs> that, that, that was like a, a reading list. If you want to know who we were... That's the reading list. No, but it, it's fascinating because most of the most of these things they're coming all from sci-fi. It's, it's incredible how much sci-fi has been accurate in, in a way uh, in, in in predicting how some of these things would would evolve. Of course, making it happen and the way you make it happen. That's why I mean, in the metaverse, even though it's an old concept and you're just rebranding an old concept, it's always just, created and regulated. And not very, very simply for 
me sat here not having a clue what you're talking about in in a sentence or two what's the metaverse it's a term that comes from from sci-fi from a novel and it's just a, a universe that is beyond the uh, the physicality. So this is gotcha. one, the, the, the easier definition. Gotcha. It's been transforming the way we are imagining it in, in a virtual environment that is persistent and in which you communicate and you and you interact in a uh, quasi-physical way with all the other people that are connected to the same uh, to the same environment. So it's like it's like second life for everything. So you 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 order food or you do your banking. I got it now. It's in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have an image. I've got it. No, I read so many papers on the metaverse, and this is the, the thing I could came up with <laughs> when you ask. That's terrible. <laughs> Grillen, recognising that you've got a hard stop, shall I shall I bring us cleverly to a close with my last question? That was subtle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want you to moan at me that I made you um, late or anything like that. So I, I was having a little nose around uh, Gatano's sort of CV, and I saw, I don't know if you still are, but I saw that you were a board member of the National Video Game Museum. Is that correct? Proud of. That's why Proud I of. think I'm so Okay, then. So my question, my question is to you first, then, Gatano. What is your favorite exhibition in that um, museum? I haven't been there since before the pandemic. And one of my favorite uh, exhibitions, they had all the porting of Donkey Kong. That was like a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic. And it was amazing. I mean, I, I, I knew that Donkey Kong was being, has been ported in a, any possible platform, but I never saw them all together. I mean, that, that was incredible. And they have another great thing done with Sonic that was, uh, was, was fantastic. It is a wonderful place, am- amazing people. And honestly, I have a strong connection because one of the problems I want to solve is how to preserve video games and get fixed copyright <laughs> in that sense to let us preserve, expose, and curate these this amazing, amazing works because we're risking it. I mean, we are losing video games from the 80s and 90s already. Because the format are degrading, you have to pour them, you have to find them. And, and so far, we've been really lucky because there have been uh, collectors, there have been people, modders that actually collect them. We had, by chance, the British Library was collecting magazine, and so there were a lot of newspapers that would have video games as, as part of the package and video game newspaper. But we should, you should I mean, honestly, it, it's like, you know, the VNA, the VNA started collecting photographs before it was a thing. And that's, yeah, yeah. Th- that amazing collection. Uh, we have to be careful with video games because they really represent who we are. And it's not only the video game museum, a lot of other museums, it's not the specialist museum that are caring about it. It's, it is becoming something, something extremely important because it, it, it's a risk. I know that societally we might have bigger problems, but if it's something that we can solve, you know, amending limitation exception in copyright law or simplifying the, the licensing to museum. I mean, museum, they're there for us. <laughs> have you ever been Willem? no i've not but it's, I, I, one thing i want to say is that last time i went to japan i was in shinjuku and was just typing in cool places to go and four stories up in the building up some stairs there's a place called the eight bit cafe and it is utterly cool it's basically a cocktail bar with just a whole bunch of original and newly written eight bit games it was what's, fantastic what's, what's an eight bit game eight bits kind of game boy sort of level of you know the oh, okay. old day that kind of level of, um, of of pixel speed kind of thing. It was just fantastic. And again, you know, that was kind of a museum of kit. They kind of had, had all the old kind of stuff from the 80s and early 90s as well. And yeah, it was it was an absolute, in, it, it was a catch-all for a different time. Just like so many other artifacts are, it really gave you a feel yeah. for it. You've like, been in my office. Different. I mean, I have a, a, a cemetery of console, starting with uh, the 2600. <laughs> I've got an I had the old Atari, the, the one with the brown panelling, the, the Atari with the, that big fat joist. I love that so much. Oh my, look at that. Full podcast, people can't see it. It's awesome. It's not just that. It looks like Gatano has disconnected himself. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, if that happens in the metaverse, he'd be dead, man. Look at that. <laughs> he's back. He's back. I can, can, hear him. can you hear us, Gatano? The, the, the cable. <laughs> That's hilarious. Step on the cable. So you're not really in the metaverse yet, are you, Gaetano? It's not no, no, no. <laughs> oh, thank, 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 you, thank you for um, thank you for coming on the podcast and sharing your um, amazing experiences with us. It's been a it's been a great laugh. It's been really um, entertaining. <laughs>
Good on. I'll see you on the next one, mate. I don't, I don't know what the next one is and what we're talking about, but I'm sure it'll be um, something fascinating. So take care both. I've loved it. Thank, Thank you, Thank you.